Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test Tube Plus today. I am Trace, and this is episode one of five in our new series on hygiene. Hygiene, if you're watching, I don't actually know anyone named Gene, but I'm sure there's a Gene out there. Anyway, hygiene, this is the joke we've been making all week. Make sure you subscribe so you get more episodes of Test Tube Plus. You can also come find us over on iTunes if you want the audio podcast of all five of these episodes all at once, squished together. You can find the link to that down in the description and listen to this podcast instead of watching me here. If you've never tuned into Test Tube Plus before, welcome, hello. Uh, Test Tube Plus is a long form show, kind of like D News, my other science show, where we get really deep into the science of a topic. So today we're talking about personal hygiene, when we started doing it and if we were doing it wrong all of these years or maybe now and also how religion and laws have come into sanitation and hygiene over the millennia and what would happen if you just stopped being hygienic if you just never showered again what would happen anything would it be bad it'd probably be bad but let's kick into it first we're going to talk all about being clean right and being clean and being hygienic has some very specific cultural and social contexts and social experiences. But really, overall, hygiene is about making yourself clean, making your food clean, and trying to be healthy and disease-free. We're not so much getting into like whether or not people smell nice, although that can be part of hygiene as well. And it could be that we're just doing hygiene wrong. It comes down to bacteria, right? Hygiene has to do with managing our bacterial and viral load, making sure that we don't have bad bacteria infecting our bodies and making us ill. The thing is, most bacteria that lives on us and in us isn't bad bacteria. Most of it is good bacteria. Bacteria live in our mouths, in our intestines, on our skin, on our genitals, all over the place. And some of these bacteria crowd out other bad bacteria so that they don't infect you. They will fight off bad bacteria that could cause illnesses. They're symbiotic with us. One bacteria called Bacterioides fragilis can actually help keep our immune system in balance. It's just a piece of bacteria helping us out. Bacteria even helps break down components of food you eat, produce B vitamins that's naturally helping you. And these good bacteria, I'm putting them in finger quotes, can keep us healthy. Hygiene really just has to do with targeting bad bacteria. And this is where the hygiene hypothesis comes in. It was invented by an epidemiologist. They look at patterns and causes of diseases and injuries, and uh, specifically Dr. Strachan, a hygiene hypothesis creator from 1989. The hygiene hypothesis proposes that there was an uptick in things like asthma and hay fever and allergies, mainly because we were too clean. We weren't exposing our children to unhygienic environments. Early exposure to germs and bacteria trains our immune system in the long run. And I love this theory. I used to run around barefoot all the time and I was always outside as a kid and now I have a really great immune system. Whereas a lot of people that I've known over the years, and obviously this is super anecdotal, who didn't run around outside too much, they get sick more often than I do. And there could be any number of reasons. I don't know why I ascribe it to this, but look, in my estimation, kids, get dirty. Eat all the dirt. It's gonna be fine. Dr. Strachan found fewer instances of hay fever, even in families with more kids. Younger kids were exposed uh, to the germs of older siblings as they grew, and those things helped boost their immune system over time. A similar study was done in the 1990s looking at children who grew up in more polluted areas of Germany, and they found that those children had lower allergic reactions and fewer cases of asthma, than kids who grew up in a less polluted environment. Essentially, more pollution somehow helped these kids not have allergic reactions and asthma. You know, it's a correlation, not a causation, but it's still pretty cool and important. And animals, having them around can help you as well. Studies have shown living with pets or around farm animals can help decrease the chances of allergies. There's of course a line here you don't want to like literally live with animals. You just want to have them around. It comes down to your body learning to fight off bad bacteria and viruses and things that will make you ill. And if you're too clean, your body is not going to be exposed to the bad things and it won't learn to fight them when they come. And you will overreact to harmless substances, potentially like pollen and cause allergic reactions. Now, I think I've said this already, but I want to put this as a reminder that this hygiene hypothesis is a hypothesis. It's a theory. 
that was invented in the late 1980s. So it hasn't been tested for a long period of time. It has been tested, but not over a long period of time. It's not a fact, it's just a theory. The hygiene hypothesis is now referenced in a number of different ways, however. It's a very heavily supported theory. And now we use it for how adults can keep clean more properly. And it's not just for, for kids and for raising. Things we do every day to keep clean might actually be hurting us under the hygiene hypothesis. And it goes back to how we treat our bacterial buddies, our little good bacterial friends. So the big one in this area, especially for adults, let me pull out my soapbox, literally. Antibacterial soap is the worst. It's the worst stuff ever. Studies say that using antibacterial soap creates bacteria that is resistant to antibacterial soap. Because over time, you kill 99.9% .9 of all germs. But the ones that survive, they breed. And then they make all these new germs. Then you kill 99.9% .9 of the germs. And the ones that survive that have survived potentially two rounds of this antibacterial stuff. Now, multiply that over decades. Decades and countless thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of generations of bacteria, we are forcing them to evolve to fight this threat. And they do, and they create superbugs, or anti-antibacterial soap bacteria, if you will. Some scientists think by, by using these, this is doing more harm than good. And it comes down to one ingredient called triclosan, which is found not only in soap, but in those, those special wipes and hand gels and the, you know, the instant clean gels and cutting boards and all sorts of things that we use to just kill bacteria easily. A report by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration found no evidence that antibacterial soap is more effective than regular soap. So why are we using it? Because it makes people feel better. Triclosan in the antibacterial soap is, however, making some bacteria resistant to triclosan, but also to antibiotics. Bacteria are essentially mutating and getting stronger, specifically things like salmonella and E. coli, which are very dangerous. And this isn't 100% proven, but many studies are finding the links between resistant bacteria and antibacterial soap. The World Health Organization has put a group together to study this further. As of today, they can't directly connect the two, but this whole thing is very serious, and we really don't want superbugs or bacteria that we can't kill with modern technology. So we may be washing our hands wrong and cleaning our surfaces wrong, but what about the rest of our bodies, right? The, the whole body is involved in hygiene. Some experts say that once you're in the shower, you actually shouldn't wash your whole body. The armpits, the feet, you know, private parts, those are all important. Those are the things you really need clean. So maybe we should all just get bidets, you know, bidets. It's a little sink thing in the next to the toilet. Nobody? Okay, just me then. All this goes back to the idea that good bacteria is important to protect and that bad bacteria is important to fight, but we have to target the bad bacteria. When you do something like antibacterial soap, you're essentially napalming bacteria all over the place instead of selectively targeting the ones that are bad. Showering is sort of similar. We're washing away good bacteria as well as bad. And yes, that is keeping you healthy, but good bacteria actually trains your skin cells to resist bad bacteria, so it's important to keep it around. And they create their own antibiotics to kill bad bacteria. We need those, and we should stop scrubbing them away. But it's more than just protecting that. Showering too much is also bad for your skin physically. Your outermost layer of skin is made up of hardened dead skin cells. It's called the stratum corneum. But just because they're dead doesn't mean that the skin cells aren't helpful. These skin cells protect healthy cells underneath themselves from bad bacteria. The dead skin cells are held together with something called sebum. It's a lipid, a fatty, oily compound, and it keeps moisture in. It's excreted by your body naturally. It's on like every hair follicle, all your pores. Basically, it waterproofs our skin and holds this stuff together. But hot water that you probably have in a shower dissolves lipids, ruins the stratum corneum, and can help bacteria have access to your skin. Sometimes scrubbing your skin can destroy that protective layer enough and allow a path for bad bacteria to attack you. The good news is your body's awesome, can repair itself really easily, but the more showers you take, the less time it has to repair itself, which is why frequent showers are bad for you and can lead to dry, cracked, irritated skin because your skin can't repair itself. The American Academy of Dermatology says that you should take a short shower, use warm water instead of hot water, not lather with soap, and air dry or blot your skin. Don't 
scrape the towel across it. The thing is, it's all about finding a balance and what works for you because we need to be clean. It's important, it's hygienic and healthy. You know, there's a reason hygiene is connected to health because we need to wash ourselves and fight off that bad bacteria. It's one of the things that's helped increase lifespans and keep us healthy over a long period of time. There are germs and bad bacteria and viruses that thrive in places that can make us sick. You know, not washing your cutting board after you cut up some chicken could make you sick. Clean drinking water is super important. But there's a balance between being clean and being unclean. And over time, we started to figure that out. And it's not like that is something you can discover overnight, not just for yourself, but as a society. It's something we've been working on for a long, long, long time. And that's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. When did humans start caring about hygiene? We didn't talk about a lot of things that might not be good for us in terms of our hygiene. Let us know down in the comments if you can think of any, any factoids you might have. For example, putting those cotton swabs in your ears. You're not actually supposed to do that. You can use them to clean your ears, but you're not supposed to put them in the ear canal. It's bad for your hygiene. Let us know in the comments if you have any other ones that you think that we missed. Make sure you subscribe here so that you get all of the episodes this week. We're going to talk more about hygiene and when humans started caring about it tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Trace. Find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. See you next time.